Hi, my name is Gleb Alexandrov for CreativeShrimp.com and welcome to yet another very exciting tutorial. Today I will talk about post-processing in Blender and Photoshop. And I'm sure that these techniques will enhance your artworks in a big way. And I'm drinking cola today. Here is the raw image, unprocessed, and this is the post-processed image. And for accomplishing this tutorial, you would need Blender, obviously, and also Photoshop or GIMP. And actually, it doesn't matter what software you use, the principles are still the same. And feel free to visit Creative Shrimp to check the Lighting Open project. Is it the series of unconventional lighting tutorials for nerds? And eventually the book will be published. So the point number one is to make sure your original image is not crap. Because oftentimes we just rush to post-processing while not polishing our image enough. And for example, to enhance your image, it's sometimes just enough to rotate the camera. And to check the compositional problems, just flip the camera view by pressing Ctrl M and X two times. Oftentimes, after flipping the image, you discover that you need to tweak something. And here you can see how I tested the various angles of the camera to see what works and what doesn't work. And apparently, while doing this simple procedure, you just uh, generate a lot of content. And some of it might be good. So go ahead and make sure that your original image is OK. And uh, move on to the next point, apply tone mapping. In Blender, you can try various looks like a film, emulation, uh, in the color management tab. And I love this film emulation so much, it just uh, crushes the blacks and um, sort of emulate the old analog look of the cameras. And when you can compensate for the darkness by uh, adjusting the exposure setting and the gamma. And here I'm just scrubbing through the looks. It kind of reminds me of the color grading presets in Photoshop. You can scroll through them by using Alt and Mouse wheel. And also you can tweak the curves during this stage. You can see me tweaking the blue channel. But uh, you know what, I'll just leave that for a color grading stage. So you have set up the film emulation and it looks awesome. It adds a sort of a vintage feel to the image and what's next? And the next step often is to add an atmospheric effects, like an aerial perspective. In case of our image, this step is optional, but anyway, I will show it to you. In the Blender Compositor, plug in the mist uh, pass to the color ramp node to adjust the fall off of the mist pass. Oh, and don't forget to enable the mist pass in the layers and passes tab. Then I'm just adding this pass on top of my original image. And once again, using the color node, you can adjust the fall off of the fog and its color and other properties. And what other properties? Never mind. I will just delete the node for now because we don't need it in case of this particular scene. But now you know how to use it, that means that time wasn't wasted. And the step 4 is to add a glow to your image. In the Blender Compositor, find the glare node and set it to fog. To the fog glow, actually. And it's not the same as the previous step. It's like adding bloom to your image, but uh, don't overdo it, because this effect will look very cheap if you just uh, set it to maybe zero be very careful with the glow and everything will be okay. And the step 5 is to add a chromatic aberration. And you can ask what the hell is this chromatic aberration? And can you remember this kind of a fringe around the edges of the objects? It can be red and cyan. And can you see that? Personally, I think that this effect looks best than used in very small doses. Just like, you know, just like a seasoning on top of your image. And even if it's barely visible in the final image, it adds a lot to realism. Alright, and let's switch the software, open a Photoshop or Chimp, and let's add a bit of a diffusion. I call it diffusion because it works like a diffusion filter on the camera. Duplicate your image and apply a Gaussian blur. Then make the image a bit brighter using the curves and set the blending mode to the soft light. When you do it, the whites get whiter, the blacks get blacker, and the image gets cooler. These effects soften a bit the look of the image, and that's something that we would like to do. And also, it helps to enhance the contrast of your artwork. Alright, and let's lighten up the center of interest. Because we want to drag the viewer's eye to the focal point of our composition. 
And for that reason, pick up the soft brush, uh, select bright warm color, and just lay a few brush strokes, set the mode to overlay. You can see how it adds a punch to the focal point. And this simple technique is a very strong compositional tool. It doesn't seem like something special, but trust me, it just helps to drag viewer's eye to the center of interest. And that's what usually defines the good composition. Okay, finally, let's move on to the next step. Throw in some particles. Tiny floating particles like dust enhances the image so much. I just can't describe how much, actually. Here I'm placing the dust image on top of everything else and adjusting the curves now to make it less pronounced. These tiny floating pieces of dust here and there add a visual interest. And they kind of a hint that uh, our scene has an air. Isn't it exciting? This small detail goes a long way. And not so long ago I find myself inserting the dust in every composer they make. And that sound dumb, but that's true. And here we have a most important step, add a vignette in your image. It's a piece of cake. Just like a soft brush and darken the edges. And that's all. You have a vignette in your image. Congratulations, my friend. And what you have accomplished is you've concentrated the viewer's eye uh, in the center of the image furthermore. We want everything to happen inside the frame of the image, don't we? Oh yes, we do. And now I want to show you how to add a film grain and scratches. Now we reached the point of invisible effects that are very hard to explain. For example, here I'm picking the random grunge image and overlaying on top of my original compose using the linear doge blending mode. The trick is to set the very low opacity, it's just barely visible stuff. It's sort of invisible, but it enhances everything, that's for sure. And another psychedelic step is to simulate the film grain. I have a theory that uh, the film grain just uh, unifies everything that you render. Maybe this analog effect on some intuitive level make everything look like it was shot with a real camera. And that is pretty damn awesome. Because purely digital stuff can look flat and boring. And now we came to almost the last step of our tutorial to use a color grading. To last but not the least. What I'm gonna do here is to add a curved node and adjust the blue channel. And to be exact, I'm gonna adjust uh, the lower part of the blue channel to enhance the shadows. Usually it's pretty cool to get back some color to the shadows. To complement uh, the warm tones of the main subject, the lamp. And the other exciting thing that we can do, we can crush the blacks completely by cranking up the lower end of an RGB curve. And by doing it, we can destroy the details in shadows, and this is not always a bad thing. Actually, I think that minimalism is very sexy. Alright, and I want to show you yet another way to color grade your image in Photoshop. It's called a color lookup table. And just like you did in color management in Blender, you can scrub through the presets to test various looks very quickly. Because that fluency in picking the look, it can uh, give you an idea of what you want to accomplish using color grading. You know, it all starts with an idea. Alright, but let's return to just crank it up blue channel. What we accomplished here is we complemented uh, the main color of the lamp, this warm orange, with the cooler shadows. And the step 12 is shenanigans! I don't know how to say it differently. And this step is to do something unpredictable. For example, here I'm dragging the random image from Onsplash, turning up the brightness and adding some motion blur just for fun. And, of course, I'm setting the blending mode to overlay and revealing the little hint of this layer. And I can't explain why I'm doing it, and you won't need to explain why you do your shenanigans. The aim is to get a jaw-dropping picture, and I don't care how I get it. Uh, now let's repeat one more time what we just did. Initially we had a raw image out of Blender, we applied a tone mapping, a glow, Chromatic aberration, some diffusion to glamorize it, we lighten up the center of interest, throw in some particles, added a vignette, 
added a film grain and scratches, used color grading to enhance it, and something else unpredictable and unspoken. And uh, feel free to share this tutorial with other nerds, I hope you like it. And big thanks to James Candy, Jason Van Gumster, Phil Gosh, Charlie Ringstrom, Unsplash Team, and David Max Sween. Thank you guys. I'm glad about Xerof for creativestream.com. Visit this site and subscribe to my newsletter. You will enjoy it.